Time to go to work. Jerk of all trades podcast up in the building. It's Ray. It's Eddie. It's Eddie and Ray. Yes, here we are. In, what up? What up? It is. Uh, I'm losing track of what episode it is. I believe it's episode number 29. I'm actually not losing track. I was just kidding Woo. because Tonight. there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. We got uh, we made it 29 episodes, which is impressive because we're working on our second best of. Yes. So and a lot. <laughs> there, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that come and go. Fall by the wayside and jerk of all trades is not one of those podcasts. So here we are, episode twenty nine, and we've got tons and tons of fun stories. We've got awesome results of the universal call out, which was Native Americans, which delivered as always, oh, yeah. definitely delivered like a Walmart employee after they get off of work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not many do. So we may be the only ones oh, just because we covered it. It was great. Um, we've got an awesome video corner segment. We've got some fun videos to watch. Uh, we've got George Foreman challenging Steven Seagal to a fight. And in the video corner, we're going to have a little tie in to that. Uh, we got Zuckerberg stuff. Uh, we've got some weed stuff uh we've got some taco uh, bell and mcdonald's time stuff? travelers uh high dudes on meth uh oh, you know no. getting hexed dogs and, getting stabbed so oh shit yeah we got lots of stuff but let's start off with the universal call out results and let's start it off right with a weed story a cannabis story related to native americans so um so basically what we've got is uh this is uh Native American leaders are meeting uh, and they are talking about cannabis business on their tribal land. So this no is no taxes. State. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me that money with no taxes. Yeah, no, uh, no taxes. Obviously, they have some they different deserve it, though. rules and regulations and stuff. So, yeah, it was uh, leaders from Cali and uh, Washington State. And they believe that the marijuana industry could reap a uh, huge, huge uh, economic boost and uh, also the uh, health benefits for their communities. So. Get all yeah. types of benefits with that cannabis money. Yeah, so they want to start uh, want to start being able to uh, to do that. So yeah, it's crazy about uh, all that. I think it's awesome. The more cannabis, the better. You know, help everybody if in case they need it. Can we just go to it's the tribe? Ca- it's category categorized as medicine technically. So you know, it's like if people can take aspirin and fucking uh, cough medicine, why can't they take some cannabis? <laughs> cough medicine with codeine in it. Get your. Uh, mm, I didn't say all that. <laughs> grape drink or whatever. I'm good right where I'm at right now. Yeah. yeah. So so can we could we go then on to the uh, onto the lands? I think so. Yeah. The, it says here that uh, the tribe revealed their plan to transform a casino parking lot into a series of cannabis production facilities. The uh, probably the, gotta know somebody. The ever the evergreen market they call it. Might catch an arrow to the leg if uh, you just oh, walk up in man. there. <laughs> I feel like that, that's a that's a video game reference. That was a terror. That was like <laughs> like eighteen years too long. Like that, Skyrim. Have you that, ever played Skyrim? No, dude. Of course I know. <laughs> of course the, I. The arrow to the knee. I I know that. I know. I know the reference. I'm just saying that that was like a really old, dated reference. So. The shitty thing is, it'd be a crossbow now. <laughs> like the fucking projectile fucking gun type of bow. You think that there's there's not Native Americans that still use traditional bows and arrows? As accurately as a crossbow? Yeah. I would say no. I mean, hey, here. <laughs> do we, do, <laughs> it's a fucking crossbow. It's like a gun, but with an arrow on it. Do you think the one, when they were talking about the right to bear arms, do you think they were actually talking about like old school, like bow and arrows and stuff? Talking about uh, Philadelphia? I, I feel like I, I feel like the uh, the Las Vegas thing would have went a little bit differently if they had. Uh, it's you know, possible. Old, old school uh, bow and arrow, you know, it's harder reload. Three arrows and you've been out of there. <laughs> Everybody would have been gone. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's that fucking arrows again. Slow. Oh, let's just, man. Let's just walk away. Oh, and be like, see that guy over there? He just took one in the knee. So Yeah, crossbow. Yeah. Crossbow would suck. Yeah, crossbow is a little bit different story, obviously. Yeah, so. It's like a dart coming. 
But uh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> oh no, it's it's <laughs> that was it, man. I yeah, always... that's a cool story though. You like, I'm all about it. Anybody yeah. getting money, I'm all about. Just like get fucking get paid. Yeah, get your own money. Uh, so yeah. So uh, next story, then we've got. Um, so this one's kind of interesting. Uh, there is a company called Allergen or Allergan. Um, they're a uh, pharmaceutical Ooh, uh, pharmaceutical company. And uh, they uh, they made a deal with the St. Regis Mohawk tribe. St. Regis. St. Regis. <laughs> Regis and Kelly. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, they announced a deal. It's aimed at protecting patents for its Rustasis eye drug. So, basically, they sold their patents to the Mohawk, uh, the Mohawk tribe. Um, the Mohawk tribe yeah. getting that money, too. So in a different kind of way. Yeah, yeah. In uh, in return, so uh, Allergen's deal announced September eighth transfers the patent rights for the blockbuster eye drug Restasis. I'm not sure what a blockbuster eye drug is, but apparently it's this uh, to the Saint Regis Mohawk tribe. In return, the tribe licensed the rights back to Allergan Uh-oh. and employed its sovereign immunity to move to dismiss certain challenges to generic drug makers. Uh, they paid them thirteen point seven five million dollars up front and a potential of fifteen million dollars in annual royalties after that. Thirteen point seven up front. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's a lot of cake. They basically <laughs> just fa- they just found a goddamn loophole, and they you know Native Americans they right? got the fucking paperwork, man. Yeah, they're uh, yeah, they're just. Do you think fucking, I don't know, well, how crazy would this be? Maybe this is just a very odd thought. What if Native Americans had government like we had? Like there's like a, a tribe of 30 people and they all decide like, you know, what the laws are and like uh, currency levels and shit like that. Like back in the day or not? Like super back in the day, like actual Indians. If they had a government like ours, you know, with the fucking arrows and shit. Native Americans. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Native Americans. China men. I got respect. Uh, <laughs> I got mad respect for my fucking Indian. Indian men. There's two either. types of India, though. Right. There's in, Yeah, that's why you don't call them Indians anymore. You call Native, them Native Americans. Americans right? Yeah, I got it. I got some friends. Yeah, but I... Uh, 15.5 in royalties. Oh, I'm sorry, not 15.5. 15 in annual royalties yeah. thereafter. I mean, I think that, yeah. I mean, that's I think... a ton of, course, of money. Of course, back in the day, they had, like, you know, like a, a tribe of, like, leaders and stuff. You know, I saw it in a movie, so... Did they have presidents? No, I don't think so. I think they had the chief, right? The chief, the high chief. Yeah, the oh, high yeah. chief. You know, not not Peter Maivia, but the maybe boss. <laughs> <laughs> the boss, the boss, Tony Dancer. The boss, the boss runs everything. Oh, who is the boss? Depends on where you go. There's a lot of different tribes. John Gotti or what? Uh, <laughs> where is this? Like fucking New Jersey or something? I don't know where the fuck. <laughs> like no, this the is... boss of like WWE is Vince McMahon. The boss right. of UFC. Who is, is the, like who is the boss of the Mohawk tribe? I don't know. Uh, fucking Tonto or some shit. <laughs> King, <laughs> King Tut. Oh man! King, oh, no, that was no, a Native no, 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 no. <laughs> that was the wrong kind of India. <laughs> no, that wasn't even close. That was Egyptian, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! I'm oh, um, sorry. Fifteen yeah. mil in royalties. Red beard. Yes, no, please. Black beard. Where do I sign up for that? I don't know. I guess apparently you start working for Allergen. Yes, Native American fucking or aller- pharmaceuticals Allergan or whatever. The Are fuck they gonna is. have commercials now? You think they're gonna bust out with some fucking every three minute commercial? Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. Um. So yeah. Anyway, the fucking this company. Yeah. Uh, Allergen with the rustasis. But you know what? Yeah, rust rustasis. I think it is. I'm not sure exactly what it does. It probably should look. And they're getting this that. money until 2024. Yeah. If yeah, so that's like if if the uh, patents are upheld. Oh, dude, it's going. It's def- they wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't true. Yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, that was all I kind of wanted to say on that. Uh, and uh, next story I kind of happened upon. This one will probably be uh, Eddie will have quite a bit to say about this. I can imagine, but uh, Ray the Jerk's not a huge sports fan, so. Uh, but I thought it was interesting as I was looking up uh, for Native American stories, and I saw that the Kansas City Chiefs were going to face the Washington Redskins on monday night fucking football so and they did did you watch the game i did not watch the game no i actually way. i actually did not know that uh the it game, was the same week as the universal call out i know i know i don't have cable and i don't like football oh, so. you could download that shit but either. i saw but i saw who won uh the chiefs won 29 to 20 um but i thought there was some in, uh other interesting stuff so um 
the uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, the NFL is investigating after Terrell Pryor Senior. Oh shit! I just uh, heard about this. He said he was called the N word. Um, there was some uh, two witnesses say that there was somebody behind the Redskins uh, sideline and they were chanting at him and they were calling him the uh, the N word. You want to know what an intriguing fact is right now? What's that? I went six for six in DraftKings. What is Bam! That, what, is, what does that mean in uh, six lineups? Layman's. Six lineups cashed in DraftKings last week. NFL. Your boy Eddie the Jerk. <laughs> so that's good, I assume. Right. That is a fantastic thing. I usually lose. I usually lose all the time, but like I'm on fire right now. Yeah. So tremendous. But that. What, what do you think about? Uh, what do I think about Terrell Pryor? Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate, dude. I mean, I there's no audio of it. If I actually heard the guy say it, you know, I'd have more context, if you will. Yeah. Supposedly, but yeah, they were white. What dudes. if this guy didn't even say it and he said something close to it, maybe, or mm-hmm. some other shit that was just like he was super mad, so he just got mad or something. I mean, you got to be pretty. Fucking I mean, you are ballsy. The, you are the guy that got yelled at by Brian Pillman. After yeah, all. I mean, I was like, all right. First That's off, Ray's claim to fame. First off, I was like, I was like twelve years old, and second off, I told him to go back. You're to lucky WC- Brian Pillman didn't have a helmet. I told him to go back to WCW. Oh, he would have clobbered you. I told him to go back to WCW, and then he uh, he wanted me to hit him, and I didn't. So I did not. I did not use a racial slur against him. Were I've, you a plant, or were you, are you like a? Was that the shoot? That was a shoot, man. Uh, but I don't know. That was dude. He was getting mad heat off me. That was. Uh, they gave you tickets to do that. That was that was clutch. It would have seemed that way from the outside, but that was not the case. So I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, so yeah, maybe th- maybe this was a plant, dude. Maybe this was a plant. I, I hope not. I hope not. But what's interesting is Cam Newton just recently had a big news story because he had an opinion about a woman in the NFL, and he's get he got roasted for it. But what, like, what was his opinion? What was the deal? It's the way he said something. I would have to put it in the video corner. There is a YouTube video of it if you want to like play it with just audio maybe, but uh, he just like mockingly said something about women and wide receivers and shit. Not like sexual or anything. It's just like I don't know. I, I, you'd have to like watch about it. a woman being in the NFL. No, not or being what? in the NFL. She asked about a certain play, like the route with the wide receivers or something, and then Cam Newton was like smirkingly like, "Well, what does she know about football or something like that kind of thing." Mm-hmm. So, Did she used to play football? Do we know? I have no idea. We'll have to find. I that was out. just throwing this in there because it it was off the top, you know. Yeah. No. Um. I mean, yeah. I suppose he's right. I mean, you're not gonna have a. But they just had the biggest news story with like the Trump thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's you know the what other. I mean? That's the other thing. Let's uh, let's talk about the national anthem, man. Um, and that whole thing. Oh, this situation sucks. This shit got ugly quick. Yeah. Super ugly. It divided people right away. If this was a p- social experiment, it worked. Like if they're just pushing the buttons, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, that's probably what it is. Everybody right? took a stance on it. I took a stance on it. What's I your? Mean, what I, is your? What's your? I stance? just threw my truth out there. Uh, well, or do you not want to state what your the initial? Is? No, I'll give you a backstory on it. I'm not going off the outline with this. I just know about it. No, that's fine. Like, I don't uh, care. Colin Kaepernick is a really good quarterback in the NFL. He was in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Like he started getting upset about uh, police officers killing black people and which getting away you with would, it. Which you would. Yeah. If somebody killed your mom or dad and then like they went to court and they're like, not guilty <laughs> and everything's fine. Like, or they act like everything's fine. But in the meantime, like your brother, your sister, your whoever just died because of this fucking asshole with a gun. But anyways. He took a stance and like he started kneeling in the anthem because he didn't like he was like peace he's like saying dude you're right it's, this is fucked up what and this I want country is to built do on about it. what this country is built on peaceful um you know he, he it's not about making money for the state you know what I'm saying like that's why they're going after people is because it's it's like uh you know robbing Peter to pay Paul type of deal so it's all bullshit and it's just like let's just do our thing and all get money and if it's cannabis it's cannabis if it's fucking allergens it's allergens yeah (laughs) do what you got to do but leave us the fuck alone right it's just like if we're not doing anything wrong just leave us alone that's basically it yeah so remember you were out with me one night when we just got stopped remember we weren't breaking any laws or anything we were just walking down a sidewalk and we got stopped Wait, what was this? Me, you, and a, a mutual friend. 
back in the day? Yes. Oh, yeah. You don't remember that? I mean, I think we were actually walking behind a building. No, we were on a sidewalk, a public sidewalk. Wait, are we talking about... I don't know. I, I'm not talking about... No, we'll have to talk about this off air. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, it happened sure to us. And like me and you got to go home and our friends got oh, a ride. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to throw all that out there. No, no. <laughs> No. Unless you're gonna edit this out, <laughs> no. No, that's then let's in. talk about. It. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I'm so. sorry, I'm off the rails. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. Um, you're with me though, right? Yeah, well, I it think... seems like I'm dominating the podcast. No, no, I completely, 100, percent agree with you. I think that you know you should be able to peacefully protest something like that, and that's what this country is built on. And I think that it's really silly for people to be like. Well, if you don't like it, then if you have a differing opinion, then get the fuck out like is like stupid because that's this whole country is built on people being able to have a different opinion than you. That's what free speech is about. Yeah. And so, I mean, how ridiculous is it for even our president to come out on Twitter and say, oh, if this player doesn't want the privilege of making all this money or whatever, blah, 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 blah. They shouldn't be able, allowed to do this. Well, fuck, yeah, they should be allowed yeah. to do it. That's their fucking right to free speech to be able to do that it's not as if they're hurting anyone dude it's, it's ridiculous like, it's absolutely what, ridiculous he's not burning any flags he's not saying fuck america he's not saying any of this shit. which is legal anyway what well, he could say it yeah he but like he's just saying like you know f the system <laughs> but like right. uh you know it's, it's he's risky. making money we in- talked about this before on the podcast though and i have some points to back this up but you said a company can do what they want if they don't want to hi- hire this guy because he's a you know right. social red card right now. Like they they don't have to, and he's not getting a job. But like yeah, um, to protest, I have a crazy opinion on this. And like you know, he pays a lot of money in taxes, right? Colin Kaepernick makes like twenty million dollars a year, so that means he's paying like nine point nine million straight to taxes without even getting that on his check so like everybody that's complaining about the flag if you're not in the military or have never been in the military it's like colin kaepernick pays more money in taxes one year than an average person will pay in their fucking lifetime like if anybody's talking about soldiers and soldiers getting what they need colin kaepernick gives tons of money straight to washington dc to take care of these soldiers like he's paying big taxes like you should respect this guy. He's not he's not cheating anybody. Like I'm sure like the IRS is on his ass right now. If he ever fucks up, they're probably gonna fucking go after his ass, possibly. But like this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. But he he's he's paid his due. Like and he's not like you said, he's not doing anything wrong. No. He's not doing anything wrong and he gives. And he like he starts his own like charities and shit. It's just like so crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, this is just happening more and more. It's just more of these like hot button issues like this to divide people over something that honestly, in the end, is really not that important, right? No. I mean, what he's standing for, in my opinion, oh, is much more important than yeah. someone standing or kneeling or standing, or or standing kneeling on their fucking head. Yeah. I forget what I saw, but it was something like, um, like there were, I think it was like the people that wanted to cancel their NFL ticket or whatever because of the whole situation with the national anthem and somebody had like a tweet or something. And it was something to the effect of that. Everybody that wants to cancel or get a refund or whatever of their NFL ticket because of the national anthem thing, they should have to provide video evidence of themselves standing during the national anthem in their house, in their chair (laughs) before that game started. And if they can provide that video evidence, then they can then get their refund. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm telling you right know. now, I watch a lot of sports, right? You know me. I've seen a good share of national anthems in person and, you know, at home on TV. I only stand when it's at a fucking arena or like whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't fucking stand at the house. Right. But that like, nobody's getting up in their living room. <laughs> right. Standing. But that, but the point of that was, is that no, I'm saying they, I agree with you. They're it's ultra, like, they're extra ultra patriotic. So they stand at their house, you know, like yeah. seriously. I've I, I know military guys. I've never seen a fucking stand. Well, it's not fucking. <laughs> well, so they're not, not the getting their refund. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. And, <laughs> hey, oh, a couple more things about Kaepernick. Like, I forgot. Uh, I forgot. No, no, know. give uh, give it to me. Uh, this started from DraftKings, didn't it? Oh, I know. We're talking about the. Oh yeah, and Trump and shit. Oh, I was gonna say about Trump. 
what I was hoping for this entire time was that that they're gonna blast this fucking Kim Jong Un guy and fucking just like uh, take care of that shit. But <laughs> wait, I, you want us to blow up no, North Korea? No, I thought this was all a big smoke screen and that like we had like oh. targets in a fucking. Because the the biggest trick is to get someone to look the other way when they don't expect it coming, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, Trump is doing this. Trump is doing that. And then, like, three days later, it's like, oh, no more problem with Kim (laughs) Jong-un. They they just fucking sank it like a battleship. Sank it it like a Polaroid picture. Dude, man, U.S. is fucking crazy. (laughs) We are are definitely fucking crazy. Dude, think about how much money we spend on weapons. We complain about the cops and, like, cops having weapons. Oh, another thing I saw in the news, the cops have like a dart that they can shoot at your car and it'll uh, take a GPS with you. So even if they can't get you with the car, they'll find your ass later. Yeah, they'll just, no, they'll, well, they'll zone in on you like a map, you know, yeah. like they'll Google map your shit and <laughs> you're eventually done. you're going to run out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, don't worry, though, if you're a white lady, because they don't they don't no, they, only kill, they only kill black people. I'll tell you what. So, yeah. In joking fashion. You know, yeah. or or nurses that they arrest for not illegally doing things. Sad and, but true. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up too. It's so. a pretty shitty state of affairs, man. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so uh, and then last story. We uh, respect the police. I, well, another thing I want to say about the cops is that even though I've had my problems in the past with the cops, bothersome cops and shit like that, um, I understand it because I have a familiarity with like. In Florida, I had like three of my friends use me as a fucking thing to be a cop, a reference. And I, I was, I kept wondering if like they knew who I was because of the reference on all these applications and shit. <laughs> but I did get recruit, recruited twice to be a cop in Florida. But uh, it's just not my thing. It's yeah. just not my thing. I would want to be like the best cop ever, but if I sucked, I would fucking, I could die. <laughs> it's just like being in the military. Yeah, for so sure. I got mad. Urban, urban warfare. The dude. older I am, the more respect, respect I have for the cops and the military and everybody, you know, but the, even football players, because you know, their yeah, job's put, not easy either. Yeah. Putting, uh, putting their lives on the but line. But they get paid. <laughs> like I said, Kaepernick was given almost like 10 million a year to his fucking taxes, dude. Yeah. I complain about fucking 20 grand going to the taxes or like much less a hundred grand. What if you had to pay a hundred grand just for the fucking taxes? Yeah. Yeah. Nine million. A lot of taxes for sure. I'm sorry, bro. No, you're fine. You're fine. This is the best podcast ever though, isn't it? (laughs) I'm loving it. It is. uh, It is. It is clutch to say the least. Um, So yeah. Anyway, uh, last native. Ray called me out before the podcast. So I had to, uh, completely uh go off script <laughs> i'm just kidding oh uh, he's not kidding though. is this native american still yeah, yeah. statue do you this? even do you have do you have the outline up anymore or no what's the marker at huh we're at uh we're at 23 we're fine. <laughs> okay i'm sorry <laughs> no uh that's all right is this a statue next no no the uh that's that's cut now no okay <laughs> We can put on the blog. Let's put on the blog. <laughs> That's a good picture. People need to see that. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, last story related to the uh, the Chiefs and the Redskins deal. Um, so it was basically about uh, there was an offensive sign about four years ago, and it uh, it started to kin- uh, kindle oh, no. better relations between Chiefs and Native Americans. So um, is this a scalping deal? Uh, yeah, it was actually it was a sign the Chiefs were about to face the Redskins. And it said, the Kansas City Chiefs will scalp the Redskins, feed oh, them whiskey, send it to reservation. You know what this reminds with me the of? the number two. Black on black crime. <laughs> this is straight up Native American on Native no. American crime. <laughs> well, here's... here. I Because mean, it, it's not like a white guy. It's not like Trump saying it to the Redskins or Trump saying it to the Chiefs. It's like straight up Chiefs on Redskins. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Which is wait. fucking crazy. I mean, you do understand that people that are fans of the... These teams are not all Native Americans, right? No, I know. I'm just so saying, like, chances, in fictional character. So wise. chances are that this was probably written by a white person who was just like a fan of the Chiefs. Wait, isn't the is that the game where Terrell Pryor was called the N word? That was the newest word. That was the one that just happened. Was this this game though? No, this was four years ago. Oh, this so was four years ago. That happened four years ago, and so basically, oh geez, and the New York Times found that shit. No, no. The the story is essentially about this sign. It was at a Sonic restaurant. 
uh, four years ago. And so it was taken down and then um, it started, uh, it was found, uh, the founder and president of the American Indian Center of the Great Plains was uh, part of the gathering and became the group's point person in subsequent dealings with the chiefs. So basically um, they started working together with the chiefs organization to start um, basically, you know, cultivating a better um, representation of Native American culture within, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs For sure. organization. For sure. Oh, so, yeah. I joke around. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah. You know, kind of the... Uh, it's the, a shitty sign, for real, though. The, uh, the he- awfully shitty sign. The, uh, the headdresses and the face paint and the, uh, the Seminoles, you know, whole deal and um, all that type of stuff. Kind of trying to, uh, you know... You know, cultural appropriate uh, appropriation, I guess, would be the best way to describe it, and kind of, you know, still being able to utilize that, that. goddamn cultural pro- appropriation, man. Yeah. Fucking hate that shit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you hear it a lot these days. That's not something they used to say in the 70s and 80s. Well, yeah, cultural <laughs> appropriation. Did they even have human resources back then? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, <laughs> you know, I think that hopefully we move forward as a culture, and we see that, you know. Um, I think that you can, you know, utilize things from other cultures, but do it in a respectful fashion. Oh, for sure. And then you can do things like name your team, the Washington oh, Redskins, God, you know, and yeah. then get ang- and Didn't they get denied to <clears throat> change the name? I, I think they tried to change it this year and it got denied, actually. Or, you know, things like the Cleveland Indians logo. That could just be another conspiracy theory, though. You know, Who knows? like, you know, it, it feels like there's like certain cultures that it's it's still okay to kind of act that way towards, you know, like you're not seeing people hanging out in blackface uh, too much these days, you know, for sure. But you gotta, then you gotta be able to joke around though. Right. No, you know. I, I, th- I think, you know, yeah, you know, every once in a while I got to call someone to uh, chime in, but yeah, I remember in high school, like uh, we had this table, we're all getting drunk, eating fucking pizzas and shit like tonight. And it was just this big round ass table with fucking all the fucking, me, I'm half black, half white. My friend's half white, half Mexican. There's an all black guy, that, all black guy there, all white guy there, a fucking Spanish guy, Asian guy, <laughs> fucking like Dutch guy. It was just like we are all from different places. <laughs> like none of us are the same fucking ethnic group right now. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's one of those weird moments. But you're all from planet Earth, though. No, yeah, and we all laugh and fucking just have a good time. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. Being different doesn't mean being bad. You don't have to be the same as everybody. You know what I mean? It's good to be different sometimes. I agree. I agree. Moving along. All outside. right. <laughs> All right. So that uh, that is gonna that's gonna uh, be the end of the Native Americans uh, number twenty nine. Going yes. to the first break. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry. Uh, this is your. Uh, this is this is a, your uh, transition. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I uh, scrolled down too far. <laughs> this may this may very well be the worst transition or the easiest transition <laughs> ever. Um, so <laughs> the white man decided to invade and take over the Americas, and now Ray and Eddie are going to break down Michael Moore's where to invade next. <laughs> nice. Uh, so this was actually uh, at the suggestion of Eddie. Eddie actually watched Super, Michael yeah. Moore's Where to Invade Next, and so suggested that we could do it on the podcast. And so, Ray loved it, so I watched it. Uh, I um, I'll, I'll leave my full opinion for I thumbs up or thumbs down. Just initial reaction. Initial reaction. Um, thumbs in the middle. In the middle. Okay, I'll take it. So rock paper scissors in the middle. Or, or <laughs> middle up or middle down? Uh, I guess middle up, sort of. Um, why don't you give me your opinion? What was uh, what was your thoughts? What was a your big opinion? thumbs up. A big thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. I like documentaries, so this was pretty interesting. Uh, it did. It, it's it's like a super well done. Uh, you know, documentary. Uh, Have you seen a Michael Moore movie before, by the way? Yeah, I've seen uh, Bowling for Colum or yeah, Bowling for Columbine. I can't remember. It might have been the one after that. Uh, um, yeah, the one about. I am a fan, though. I am a fan of Michael Moore. I do. I, I do enjoy his stuff. So you know, my my thought. Like, if you gave me a Michael Moore film or a, like a super horror flick, I probably would have to go Michael Moore. To mm-hmm. be honest with you. I would say that uh, Michael Moore might actually be more horrifying than any of the villains in ah, any of the horror movies. He's his own. Horror he has movie. a fucking crazy looking character. I, so, 
here's my here's my thought process on it. Oh, okay, man. first thing we're one, way off the rails. One of one of my observations <laughs> with him is I love him talking about like trying to give the kids a coke and then uh, not give them coke but just give them a coke. Um, so I guess we should explain to people what the fuck the movie a is about. Twenty four pack with him. Okay, so. Where to invade next, you know, is kind of obviously a playoff of America and the fact that we invade a lot of other countries and that we're always at war. So you think it's going to be a war movie, but it's actually not. He basically goes into other kind of countries. Like a mockumentary, right? Like a little mockumentary. Eh, no, that's not a mo- that's not a mockumentary. Well, that, no, mockumentary would be like Weird Al, I guess. No, a mockumentary would be like a would be like this is Spinal Tap. It's like a faux documentary. It appears to be well, a documentary, it had, it had but it's a movie. Real facts, though. It had real facts. So, right. So, he, right. So, my, my, basically what he does is he goes to a different country. Like, he starts off, he goes to Italy and he interviews these people and he talks about how many days of vacation they get. And then he goes to France and then he talks about, he goes into their schooling system and he shows like what their school lunches look like and so on and so forth. And he goes to all these different countries and all these different interesting ideas and stuff. A lot of which you find out were actually ideas that were kind of connected to something we maybe did here. Um, at one point, and that's kind of the the principal point of it. So anyway, my my problem with the movie though is, and I get it, it's a documentary, and it's gonna have an agenda to it, but the agenda really, really came through in a really disingenuous way, where you could really, really tell that these people were very prepped for whatever it was that they were supposed to be talking about. Um, that nothing was really organic in terms of well, did everything you, was did, very, you set, very, that, very, very set up. And I have a problem with that. It, when it makes you, it a little smoother to digest for a documentary, right? But you know, it was, uh, it was a little. What did you think about the kids, the high school kids? What was super smart Finnish? I believe Finland. Oh, yeah, because of the lack of homework and stuff, right? Yeah, no homework and, like, fucking just... Yeah, standardized testing and stuff. They were, like, the smartest kids. Multiple they went choices. Up, didn't they go up, like, 90% and fucking... Uh, I actually agree. I, I mean, I actually agree with, you know, most of the points in the movie and most of the things that we could integrate. I think the other thing that um, I think was a little bit lost that I thought it was kind of disingenuous to not really... to only bring it up in passing is, like... Well, obviously, these countries, you know, have like some other problems too. You know, like, oh no, it's right, not they perfect re- anyway, right? But they, I mean, they really ignore the fact that some of these countries did have like massive fucking like uh, financial issues, like entire financial oh, crashes. Yeah. I think they talk about Iceland, but I mean, there's some other countries in that that have had some major, major issues as well. So I think it's unfair to completely not, um, you know, talk about those things. But that wasn't the point, I suppose. Um, so. But overall, I mean, the actual, the ideas and such that it was bringing forth, I really did like um, that aspect of it. And there are things that I really think would be, uh, would be of great use to us to look at. So, because what I, what we're doing right now with a lot of these things clearly is not working. So how do we make those work? Uh, stop buying fucking bombs that can blow up entire countries in one blast. <laughs> right. Coming from the guy that was just saying that he hoped that while Trump was World on Twitter peace. that we World fucking peace. blew no up North war. Korea, blew up North Korea. If so. we send any troops out, I'm going to be super pissed. No, but I completely... Not agree. super pissed, but I'm going to be super pissed. 100% agree. Let's stop sending our soldiers to foreign lands. And it's not going to stop the, anytime record, soon. Eddie the Jerk does stand for the national anthem. And, but Eddie the Jerk understands. Depends if, on how comfortable yeah. the chair is, if yeah. I'm standing or not. I basically, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. you I dick. I st- oh, I'm Facebook memeing you tomorrow. I stand, I stand for the national anthem because of peer pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if you don't stand, everyone's going to be looking at you like, well, who is this fucking dick? You know? I make sure I don't wear a hat, too, so then I don't have to worry about that aspect of it. I wear a second hat. I have a hat on, and then I have a second hat that's just my national anthem hat. It's a Make America Great Again hat, and I just hold it over my heart, and then I throw it after I get done with it. I gotta have you paint one of those for me. You want to make, uh, make America handmade, Great Handmade, uh, make America. Yeah. We gotta make uh, J O A T Great Again or some shit like that. Well, why would we do that? That would imply that it was bad at one point. No, well, you gotta paint something over. That it. would imply that it was great at any point. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, any other thoughts? Oh, or? we need to make uh, hats. We gotta make hats pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well. uh we got the uh, got the Patreon up and running, and so we're gonna ha- start having some uh, some stuff flow, some merchandise flowing onto that pretty soon here. Yeah, so yeah, that should yeah. be fun. So, um, any other thoughts, opinions? We uh, gotta put that in social media because they can actually like video call us now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Um, Better than Instagram. Very true. Very true. Any other thoughts or anything on the movie, Eddie? Oh, dude. Uh, really informative uh, and insightful. If you like documentaries and shit, it's a, it's a big thumbs up. Uh, France, the kids in France are having bomb ass lunches. It does look pretty good. The bomb lunches. And I don't understand why we can't do that at all. Like feed the kids. Yeah. They're spending less than lunches. they're spending less than we are per, per child. Yeah. And Italy is crazy. And I think they have a lot less children though. Italy is a uh, really, uh, have, has a different uh, approach to working. And then, uh, you know, other, those were like the highlights for me. I mean, I think, I think Finland, sh- France and Italy, those I like think the showing dreams. the industries and like the way that they treated people and like in, giving in Portugal, be- Portugal was weird because they stopped arresting people for drugs period. Yeah. So you can have whatever you want. And Portugal's like, all right, <laughs> I know. buy our wine and uh, fuck these hot chicks. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I remember. I'm just I'm stereotyping again. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, that was. We're gonna have to bleep me out from now on. <laughs> we might have to censor Eddie. We might have to. So that's ed- what I'm saying. Make Joet great again. <laughs> we might have to edit Eddie out of this podcast, possibly. <laughs> like it's just gonna be Ray talking, <laughs> and then there's gonna be blank space. Always a good time at the Jerk of All Trades podcast. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, a, a medium thumbs up from Ray, and a yeah, you know, I I think and that a big uh, thumbs up from Eddie. I say I, I say watch it. I definitely say watch it. Um, it's very interesting. It's informative. Um, I just I didn't love the way that it was put together. I guess because it felt a little bit disingenuous. Um, and I mean, that's not my, enough uh, suspense. That's Michael. No. That's Michael Moore, though. I mean, his that's his documentary style. You know, he's got a very very direct agenda. It was and, very produced. Yes, it's and it's super produced. Very right. You didn't like the uh, <laughs> Coke with the with the in France? Yeah. You try a Coke? Not really. Like it, it just, yeah, it, it feels like, like it's, you know, I, it almost feels a bit like a mockumentary, you know, like I get it though. It's a good way to get the information out there. Um, you know, do it in a documentary style, just but putting it out in the universe. Right. So yeah, you never know what um, could happen. Yeah. I, Look I, at what we do every week. I liked the info. I just didn't like the delivery as much, but you know, it is what it is. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, um, we saw where Michael Moore was going to invade next. And now we're going to get ready for Eddie to invade your ear holes with some social media assault. So, Eddie, why don't you hit him with social media, and then we'll go on break. Yeah. <laughs> social media, uh, I guess, first and foremost, our fucking Patreon. Uh, we are live on Patreon if you want to check it out. I think it's patreon.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. It is, yes. Uh, you know, a dollar, two dollars, ten dollars, whatever you want to do. Uh Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, don't sleep. We are live on fucking Instagram all day, every day. Uh, JOATpodcast.com, man. Right, get that shit going. Uh, we got the video corner is live. If you haven't checked out the video corner, got to check out the video corner. Uh, super good shit all day, every day. Uh, and then uh, email. Ray, where can they email us at? Uh, jerk of all trades podcast. All right, I just had to make sure you weren't on Pornhub right now at <laughs> gmail.com. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here as always. Oh yeah. Oh, all yeah. day, every day. Oh yeah. We're here on Twitch too. Here, there, a little everywhere. Uh, Twitch TV, uh, J O A T podcast. You know what time it is. If uh, you've been listening to this for a while, uh, leave a comment, review us on iTunes. If you can got five minutes, it doesn't take very long. If Eddie the Jerk can do it, you can do it too. <laughs> All right. This is true. Uh, super true. So um, we're going to stay true to you and come back for part two, motherfucker. So uh, you want to hit that switch, Ray? Uh, yes, but I do want to mention, oh, please sorry. subscribe. Subscribe. Oh, yeah, subscribe. subscribe. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play. We would appreciate it. So, yes, let's go to break. We will come back. And we are going to lead with George Foreman versus Steven Seagal. We'll be back. Ah, you still remember the first time you caught a glimpse of her. How could you forget? You were but a budding blossom and her equally budding bosom called to you. You felt tingles, shivers, shakes and blood flowing into areas that began to transform with the wafting air of fluorescence. Your very first crush, the local librarian. You imagined the things you would do to her, the things she would do to you. 
what she looked like beyond those conservative clothes that society surely forced her to wear. Yet, as the years went on, things began to change. She began to change. You began to change. And so did technology. If only there were a parallel. You want to continue to cram your head full of stories, knowledge, and whimsical fantasies, but can't bring yourself to face the withering beauty that once hinted at an unknown primal urge that would consume you. Well now, you'll never have to again. Audible is a new way to read. Scratch that. Listen to your favorite and soon-to-be favorite books in audio form. Audible has over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. Many are read by famous folks you know and love and are available to you via the free Audible app. With that many choices, you are sure to find a book you are going to love. Now, on to the good stuff. Want a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook? Well, of course you do. You'd be crazy to say no. Head your happy little fingers over to audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast to sign up for your free month and get your free audiobook courtesy of the jerks. Thank God or the Matrix creating billionaire aliens, you'll never have to be confronted with the fleeting nature of beauty or try and figure out the clearly demonic Dewey Decimal System. All right, guys, we are back. And so we have talked about some super fights and potential super fights on the show before. But this one might just take the cake. And judging by the look of these two dudes, they might just eat the goddamn cake anyway. Oh, shit. George Foreman has challenged Steven Seagal. Am I going to have to do the breakdown for this? To a celebrity death match. (laughs) Actually, I don't think it's a celebrity death match. I think it's just a regular... Uh, yeah, they're, they're (laughs) the self-declared king of the grill, George Foreman. Size... (laughs) <laughs> I got to get her foreman. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Grappling and wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it to Seagal, I guess. I'm giving it to Seagal. Yeah. I got to. Foreman's probably too stiff. Uh, striking. <laughs> what about the jaw? <laughs> the chin? Yeah, the chin. Oh, Who gets the on, chin? Dude. Foreman. Yeah, foreman's hands are probably huge. I don't know. And Steven pro- Seagal's got like a pretty. Six foot six? He's got a pretty big chin, so. Easier to hit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can see that thing a mile away. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I yeah, honestly, this is super crazy. Hopefully, it doesn't happen because I want. Do you know? Do you know getting hurt around? Do you here. know why this is happening? Um, I do not, Ray. It, uh, so this is all because of the national anthem thing. Oh, Jesus Christ! It is Steven Seagal. Do they have the same agent. <laughs> Steven Seagal was. Uh, he had a bizarre interview on Good Morning Britain in which he criticized the Take a Knee movement. Uh, his strangest quote in it being, I myself have, have risked my life countless times for the American flag, and I don't understand or agree with this kind of behavior. I think it's an outrage. Um, so, I mean, you know what's funny about that? What's that? Steven Seagal wasn't in the military. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, I know. Like, it was it's just so like silly. He, he was under siege one time. He was under siege a second time. Like, what uh, the fuck does, what does he think, dude? You know what's crazy is he used to hang out with Anderson Silva. Did he really? The UFC fighter. Hmm. Yeah. They're, they're, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why, but yeah, I guess they're friends. Yeah. I, I think that that's a great point. That maybe How big is George Foreman now? Like, is he still solid or is he like uh, starting to get chubby? I think he's getting, I think he's done Ben chubby, right? Yeah, he's a, he had that Foreman grill though. Yeah. Foreman grill made money. Yeah. Big money. So I guess. Uh, Who would you take? Um, you, didn't, you didn't give the Ray the jerk. uh Prediction. The Ray the Jerk breakdown. Um, I guess. Fuck. How old is uh? I don't how know. old is Steven Seagal? <laughs> He's prob. They're probably the same age. If I had to guess, two or three years difference max. So, do we even know? Does Steven Seagal actually know any form of, mar- form of martial arts, or is it just some dumb shit he made up? All I know is he's never fought in the UFC. I, well, I've, I've never seen. Have, so. I've seen George Foreman fight for real like forty times, and yeah. I've seen Steven Seagal fight for real zero times. Yeah. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. 
But I mean, you did see him go under siege. I've never seen uh, the. I've seen the earlier ones, not the later ones with Seagal. Yeah. So. Anyway. Do you think uh, Foreman would pound him out? Probably. Come on, man. You got to take a side. I said right. Foreman, too. I'll take Foreman. I'll All take right. Foreman. All right. Yeah. I'll Come on, Foreman. Ray. I mean, that's easy. If there was a black belt for boxing, definitely uh, George Foreman would have it. He beat fucking Michael Moore, and Foreman was like Wait. in his 40s. <laughs> Wait, he beat My- Michael Moore? <laughs> the, yeah. dir- the director <laughs> of Word <laughs> of Bay next? The director and the haunted guy all at the same time. I mean, the other the other thing, too, though. Michael Moore was a boxer. Steven Seagal is above the law, so. Above, thank you. Above the law. Yes. Yeah. That was the one. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a good man. Yeah, hey, I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking him. I just He's think George Foreman man. put it on him. <laughs> I I'm mean, just... <laughs> are they wearing boxing gloves? Is this like Nevada rules boxing <laughs> match? Or is this like street fight with no rules and, you know, Seagal might get a choke or something? Like I don't that. know. I'm just, re- I'm just reading. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading uh, the names of Jean Cla- or uh, sorry, of uh, Steven Seagal movies, by the way. Yes. As you could probably tell. Yeah, clutch. Ooh, they're making I believe bo- you call that clutch. They're, uh, they're actually making Above the Law Part 2. It's, uh, it's in pre-production right now. Ooh, is Anderson Silva in it? Probably uh, not, right? Uh, it's in pre-production. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I might watch it if he's in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. it's uh, Shout out to the Chicago Cubs. I don't know uh, what inning it is, but, uh, you know, we're live. <laughs> we're not fully live. Go Cubs, right, Ray? Yes, go Cubs. Go Cubs. It's like... Uh, back to back, I'm calling it. Yeah. It's like... Uh, Ray, I got some DVDs for you to watch of the Cubs. Before the World Series starts, you have to watch it, and then we have to do it on the podcast. <laughs> Game seven of the World Series of last year. It's only I like think, three hours long. I think I already saw it. Dude, best baseball game of all time. I'm I'm dead fucking serious. I can't, she, I can't tell if you're just like mocking me. No, or... no, no, no. I really want you to see it. I, I mean, I want. I'm, I have the Blu-ray, so next time I come over, we'll watch it. I'll, only if it's in hul- ultra high definition. Yes, it's super it, ultra. Is it? And it's all extra too. Is it, it's, is it's, it Blu-ray or is it ultra high definition? Blu-ray. Uh, it's not the 4K, but oh, it's the, uh, I can't do that then, dude. Ah, uh, damn. I'll buy the. I don't think it's out yet for the 4K. They don't have the 4K. Let's disc wait until. Let's one. wait until it's out, and then we'll watch. You have it a PS4. Works in the PS4. No, no. I want to. I want to watch it. Uh, I want to watch it in ultra high definition. I want to watch it in ultra high definition. <laughs> all right. All right. Next topic. Tra- trans- transitioning out. We're transitioning out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, more and more George Foreman is going to end up knocking out St- Steven Seagal if they ever fight. On the topic of knockouts, Mark Zuckerberg is now claiming that all diseases are going to be knocked out by the year 2100, Ray. We're going to be dead by then, probably. Ah, uh, it's too bad for us. Yeah. Just going to miss it. All yeah. fucking diseases. How is this possible? Uh, I don't know. I think that's the thing, too, is that Mark Zuckerberg can actually claim that, and then in 2100, no one's going to be there to call him out on it because he's going to be dead, too, right? What's his annual? Uh, is he making more than Jeff Bezos for fucking Amazon in the Waltons? Or is he under, uh, under them? I don't know. I don't know. Shit. I don't know the but, answer uh, to that. Well, he's got, you know, hey, what if you had Mark Zuckerberg money and you just used it all for, like, science and medicine and shit right and also you know like a big house and buying islands and stuff that'd be cool too (laughs) that would definitely be (laughs) i think he does a little bit of that stuff too so yeah he's got according to zuckerberg life expectancy has increased by a quarter year for each year in the past century if we continue that progress average life expectancy will be about 100 by the end of this century that's like average ray 100 wow that's that's pretty damn high. I don't know what the average is right now, but it's got to be probably less than eighty, right? Yeah, I would assume so. That's a, yeah, so into the seventies, maybe sixties. I don't know. So could you imagine being like one hundred and thirty? Because we, we think of people that are like one hundred and five right now, <laughs> pretty fucking old. Yeah, but they exist, and like people are dying older, later and later in life. Yeah. What is the oldest person? Do we know? They do have a Wikipedia for it. I oh. believe it was in. Either like Mexico or Argentina, I believe she was 116. But they're not. They're not. The the math might be fudgy on that because it's not United States or whatever. But that's another stereotypical thing that might be true. So I don't know. Um, the oldest person verified uh, on record is a French woman. 
122 years. 122? Uh, Where, where's the 116? One, one, 122, 164. 164 days. And then there are seven verified living super centurions on the list, the oldest of whom is a Japanese woman, Nabi Tajima. She's 117 years old. 117. There it is. Okay, my bad. Japan. Motherfucking Japan, dude. French, French though. They're blowjob robots making them live longer. <laughs> dude, think about this, dude. This lady was born in 1875. When she died, like the Matrix was out. Holy like, fuck. How fucking weird is that, dude? She was born in 1875, and by the time she had passed away, she could go, like, you know, see the Matrix in the theater. Dude, she was like 20 years old when the Cubs won the first World Series. Not the one last year, but the fucking first one. Wow. She was even mad that the Cubs <laughs> well, hadn't won one in 100 and something years. Oh, she was like, yeah. I was like 20 when that happened. She was a French lady, too, so she probably didn't care about the Cubs. But, yeah, Cubs know. suck forever. Screw them. Yeah. I think she drank a lot of wine. <clears throat> uh, I hope so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they could put that in the fucking studies, man. If she was a big wine consumer, 117. Mark it down. Mark it down. Mark yeah. it down. So, um, so yeah. So, well, sadly, you and I aren't going to be a part of the uh, disease-free world of the future. Although, uh, we might. We damn. might. We you might. Never know. We Never might know. if we made it to I think we could do it. Yeah. If we if we live to be like 120, we could uh make it to twenty one hundred. So that'd be cool. Ooh, the average has gone up. So yeah, 120 is not out of reach. But we're gonna assume it's not gonna happen. So like let's make the most of it and get high and eat some fast food. And based on the next story, we certainly aren't the only ones. So yes. let's talk about legal <laughs> weed. And uh, apparently legal weed is uh doing pretty well for fast food chains such as McDonald's and Taco Bell. Hell yeah, dude. This is the best story ever. Yeah. The best. <laughs> So anywhere that fast food is, or sorry, where fast food is legal, where marijuana is legal, um, you're seeing a huge, huge increase in people that are going to fast food. 43% of legal marijuana users ate at a McDonald's restaurant in the past four weeks. Um, 18% ate at a Taco Bell and 17.8% went to Wendy's. That's, those are good numbers. (laughs) I'm semi-embarrassed about this, but uh, it's good for business, right? I mean, like people are spending money. At fast food joint. At the thing. fast food joint. And not only that, they're good ass weed. Like this is medical users, right? Yeah, the legal Correct. marijuana. Yeah, users. this is so after they went to a dispensary. Not only are they paying for big weed, but they're paying for big fucking uh Yeah, big uh big, <laughs> big Mac double cheese. <laughs> big Mac. Double cheese every day, like ten times a day. That was perfect opportunity to say Big Macs. They're paying for big weed. They're paying for Big yes, Macs. Yes, Big Macs. Big they, Macs. they got uh, they got the Whopper weed, and they and they, <laughs> they went and got a fucking Whopper because Burger King is doing pretty good on this too. So is KFC, <laughs> Jack in a Box, fucking Carl's Jr. They're all seeing huge ink, huge increases. Ray, we got a franchise, man. Okay, start. We got to invest in Wait, the, uh, dispensary or fast food restaurant. Fast food, and then we can get the dispensary. <laughs> so we're gonna bring. We're, we're gonna, gonna work our way up. Let's open a McDonald's right next to dispensary in Colorado. That's not the worst idea let's, you ever let's, had. Hey, let's add that on the Patreon. That's page. not let's, the worst. Let's put it on the Patreon page. Ooh, if you don't, if, you, right if you donate five thousand dollars to the podcast every month, we will open a McDonald's franchise. Yes, right next to dispensary in Colorado. We have the best fucking podcast ever from that McDonald's. Yes. So this is going under the uh, UFC notes. Yes. So, yeah. so this Love is, it, our, this is, uh, this is a great idea. This is a fantastic idea. What about Taco Bell? You're not big into Taco Bell. I mean, we can, we could, well, I mean, McDonald's has seen the biggest increase though. Oh, that's look, true. Look at them numbers. But dude. It, it can't be because of the kids. I don't know. It's hard For, to say. A 42% increase at McDonald's only 18% at uh Taco Bell. So. Why would we, why yeah, would we oh, go yeah. second best? The numbers are yeah, the numbers are the in. The numbers don't lie. I got you. I got you. And they spell and they spell disaster for small Joe. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Oh, the the math is right though. Yes, this is this is true. So So for our next story. <laughs> I put a spell on you. Because of my Ventrex gave me my life back. Hail Satan. Uh what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 
Oh boy, was that? Ow! That might be the hounds of hell. <laughs> the hounds. <laughs> Not really sure what happened right there, but uh, I think it transitions well into our next story about the man on meth who stabbed a dog to death because it put a hex on him. Oh no, poor doggy. Yeah. Do we know what kind of dog this was? Oh, I do not know. It was, I, it was yeah. brown and white, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that to be true, but uh, yeah. So essentially, we've got a uh, the Lancaster County District Attorney's Office it says that a 29 year old Joseph Elliott, he's going to serve one to two years in prison and uh, three years probation for stabbing a dog to death and then stealing. He also stole a car in a Jeez. separate uh, incident. Looking at his creepy little face right here. <laughs> Um, I believe that um, I'm going to give him the middle finger of the week. He's getting yeah, the middle finger of the week. Guy. Fuck this guy. Um, so, yeah, they got called to this guy, Elliot's apartment, um, and they found him nude standing in the doorway. Um, this is where I would link the Misfits no. in the Doorway song if we had rights to that. Oh, no. um, and he told them that he had consumed methamphetamine. Uh, they found the dog in a bathroom with lacerations to its body. They can uh, conducted an uh, necropsy on the animal and found that it uh, suffered eight stab wounds and bruising on its body. Um, oh, apparently, he admitted he started choking the dog because it put a hex on him. So, no, <laughs> might have been one of the the hounds of hell. Uh, put the a dog whisper. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? Or it could just be that he was just completely insane from the methamphetamines that he was taking. Oh, so that he did do a take a drug test. I don't know, but I mean, it what? says that he was uh, he was on methamphetamine. He admitted it. He told them he had consumed methamphetamines. Yeah, but the proof is like the proof is in the uh, in the speed. Yeah, well, you know, got drug test this guy. Yeah, I don't. I assume that they've done that. So, um, but yeah, he could um, be an alien for all we know. <laughs> it's uh, that is that is possible. <laughs> Who gets jinxed or jinxed? Who gets hexed by a fucking dog? This guy's just a dickhead, man. I mean, I think he was just probably like you know insane right from the drugs yeah like bath salts you mean like the fucking right he's going crazy right but he was on meth he was on meth you know uh, he going crazy for meth this is a definite strike against meth or maybe right or now. possibly it was just the fucking you know the dog maybe the dog was nah. actually evil <laughs> we don't know until we interview the I, dog and the dog is dead now i did my my uh, i couldn't even think of that until you said it <laughs> so we need to get the ouija board out and we need to contact this fucking dog and uh, shit we yeah. need to talk to him and figure I out. I think what I the did already. I, I was barking at it. You know, oh yeah, that'll get oh, sent out. I thought that was the, him. Yeah, <laughs> into the into, into the, the dog a, heavens, into the astral realm where yeah. all where all dogs go to heaven. Or we'll have to see how <laughs> next week goes. Do do all dogs? That's that would be a great question. We should watch the documentary "All Dogs Go to Heaven" and uh, see oh, what it has maybe. to say about this. Because yeah, I don't believe be that there would be a Satanist dog. I got a big plate on my table though with uh, Mr. Robot season one and two. So. Yeah, yeah, you do. We'll see how that we'll see how that goes. And you, let's say with um with Mr. Robot on we your plate. We got to tease that, right? Let's not forget that this guy's name is Elliot, and that is the oh main, no, that is the main character for Mr. Robot's name is Elliot. Damn, so. damn, damn. And this guy's name is actually Joseph Elliot, though. So this is just like a FBI agent. He's not even a real person. He didn't even kill a dog. It's very possible. <laughs> this is just like some FBI story. This is some fake news. Is that this what you're guy, saying? I don't know, man. Look at him. He's just, no. It could be fake. What if it was? What if this is complete? Where's the dog? There's no picture of the dog. Well, I mean, the dog's You have a good point. It, well, it's still evidence. Like, if I'm a lawyer, like, where's the dog? I don't see a dog. This was in Philly, bro. I know. I Philadelphia. Know. Well, there is a, there's a video of it. Philly. Yeah. Damn. They just kind of reiterate what... Yeah, we uh, should have watched that beforehand. I've watched it already. Yeah, I saw it on my phone. They, do, they don't... They just repeat what's in the article. They don't really say anything of note. So. Yeah. Anyway. All right, yeah. All right, well... Let's go from a possessed dog killer from the city of brotherly love. Oh, I see where you're trying to go there. <laughs> to a goddamn time traveler stuck out in the woods in the sticks of Matt, uh, Wyoming. Back from the year 2048, <laughs> Wyoming man has been arrested after claiming he traveled from time all the way from 2048 to warn of an alien invasion. Is he a fucking Blade Runner or what? <sighs> yeah. Apparently this guy was drunk. He had to have been drunk. Hold on. Publicly Hold on. intoxicated. Hold on. There, there's a new Blade Runner movie coming out. And <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so Blade. Oh my god. Arnold. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> He's not in Blade Runner. Harrison Ford is in Blade Runner. Oh, my bad. There's a new Blade Runner movie uh, that's actually just coming out now, which I need to go see. But uh, actually, it's called uh, Blade Runner 2049. So apparently, <laughs> this guy just was really drunk, and he saw that Blade Runner 2049 was coming out. But he's he, off by a year. But he was off by a year. So yeah, we should mention that this guy was really fucking drunk. Oh, no. And uh, oh, my God. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He also, hold on. He also told. Po- I'm holding. Hey, please hold yourself. He uh, <laughs> he told police that he was uh, he was trying to travel back to 2018, but he accidentally traveled back to 2017. So apparently, <laughs> he's all fucked up. Oh man, he was he meant to be from uh, from 2049, but it's he was from fault. 2048 instead. He did a beer podcast beforehand, and yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he has an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but what's still pretty bad, though. But uh, apparently, he said, "Can the robot uh, lawyer save you for that?" <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Oh, do not pay. Let's try. Do not pay out. I got abducted by an alien. Are you trying it from Are, the? No. <laughs> am I doing it? Yeah. Um, I got it. Hold on. I got. I. I got it. I'm on it. I traveled from <laughs> the year 2048. You can't possibly and be guilty. If, I am drunk. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. So actually what happened is. <laughs> Can't prove it. Um, let's see. They're sorry to hear it. Um, I can. Uh, ooh, I've got I've got one. What's up? Uh, send an appeal to refund an item with impractical and unreasonably uh, warranty guidelines again. OK, so what was he drinking that sent him into space? <laughs> I don't know. So, I'm suing Jack Daniels. Actually, me through time. what he said was, he said that uh, he told law enforcement the 2017 thing, whatever. Um, but he said it was because aliens filled his body with alcohol and had him stand on a giant pad to transform him to the or transport him to the past. Damn. So it was the fucking aliens, dude. They filled him with alcohol to try to make it. So then when he did travel back, then no one would believe him because mm. he had a blood, blood alcohol content of 1.36. I wonder what they gave him. I don't know. Future future alcohol, maybe? Man. I wonder what the future alcohol tastes like. Probably like the Delicious, stuff of, probably. Now, yeah. I would think. Yeah. Never know. Love me some beer. Never know. Definitely love me some beer. Yeah. So. He told, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 1.36. That's pretty heavy. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. Me driving. Well, well, he wasn't driving, I don't think. He wasn't driving? No, public intoxication. Oh, my bad. My bad. He doesn't have Jeez, a, he was just walking around. He doesn't he have a driving. car. He oh, doesn't have a God. car. He's from the future, dude. He wasn't even driving. They don't have cars in the future. They just teleport places. Oh, can, is 1.3 to be stumbling around like that? That's not possible, is it? Uh, I don't know. 1.3 is... This isn't, you know... I've heard of higher than that, for sure. So, let's not forget that he was actually sent... He actually came back to the past, and he's warning of an alien invasion that's happening next year. I'm not worried. <laughs> so it's very possible we may be looking to say this, this every year it never happens his name is bryant johnson bryant johnson so he well, could if be the a, aliens come they gotta take him first he could be a face <laughs> that we might winner. remember in the future so mr johnson yes johnson and johnson bryant johnson not to be confused with brian johnson from acdc ready for some videos right yes yes let's do uh let's do some videos all right i'm in for a treat this week all right, so All right, you got the first one lined up. Um, one second, almost there. Hold on, I got a stupid ad. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Wait for the ad to go away. Love that ad block, bro. Well, I mean, you're just looking at a blank screen, I uh, assume, right? I'm still on the outline. <laughs> okay. All We're right. in Canada. Oh no, the Grenada. I'm sorry. Grenada. I believe that's Grenada. Yeah. Travel, travel. Got a countdown. Um, Three, two, one. All right. So this is a performance by Screamin' Jay Hawkins. All right. We got uh, this MTV back in the day. Yeah. So he is uh, dressed up in the most racist garb that you could pie. He's dressed up like a witch doctor. Oh, He's got shit. a skull. Skeleton, skeleton in the background. Just hanging out. It's like he's in the circus almost. It's pretty goddamn creepy looking. He's got horns in his nose. Hey, he's got a bone coming through his nose. 
He's got his full. He's got a nice afro, though. He's got good hair. Yeah. That damn hair, Ray. <laughs> oh, boy. Is that a fucking wig? I don't Probably think so. Yeah. No, I think that's his regular hair. He's got a good sheen going on. He kind of reminds me of a Superfly, Jimmy Snuka. Yeah. Our stuff is like off by a little bit, too, and it's kind of uh, ah, scary. It's fucking with your mojo. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't slow it down like the. So intro. this was uh, this was from 1956. This is an epic episode of the fucking. Someone uh, someone says epic. That. Someone said he's the real godfather of shock rock. Well, yeah, he's. Uh, this doing is a damn thing, man. This is definitely. Terror. Can you imagine what this made? Imagine this on Facebook. Imagine people be taking sides like. They're yeah. offended by this guy or they're not offended by this guy? I don't guy? think so. I think at the time, I think that they probably, like, dude, imagine the reaction of, like, suburban white America at this point, huh? Oh, it's it's a lot different. What year is this? 1956. 56. So this is still before civil rights, right? This is before oh, MLK? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. He's, he's using the Negro bathroom and the Negro fountains and shit. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, quite crazy, quite crazy. But this is his ticket out. Yeah, you know that voice, man. He's got a good. He's voice. a good singer. Like in the car, this is a great song. Yeah, and this is fitting for October, man. This is definitely a Halloween classic too. So, I'm surprised Ooh. it's not used more in uh, scary movies or like you I've, know. I've seen it in. Uh, Multiple horror movies. Oh, of course, you've seen it. <laughs> seen every horror movie ever. So <laughs> I'd be like saying they use it in WrestleMania. I'd be like, ah, yeah, I know that. Ooh, no, that's not a call out. I'm just saying. Like, oh, he's doing like the Kamala thing there. Uh oh, oh, Kane. Oh, look at that. The oh, jackal. he had cool little teeth on the ground there. He's got another skeleton. I knew it. Oh no, that's a stick. That's just Kane. My bad. I thought he had another skeleton. Damn it. What if he just killed a ghost out of thin air? This dude is badass, man. Screaming Jay Hawkins. Ooh. Yep. There it is. You can groove onto that one on your next ride to work. Yes. Keep in mind, we will have these on the um, website. JOATpodcast.com. Yes. yes, we will. Video Corner. Yeah. Is it uh, slash video corner? Or is it, we don't have to say that. Yeah. Just click on. Yeah. Uh, just, just click go on there the video. And click on, yeah. yeah, it's our site. Just click on uh, video corner, and it's everything's in there. All right, you ready for the next one? Uh, Steven Seagal, best nope. fight scene. Nope. Oh wait, no, the weird Satanist guy. Oh, good thing you said something. All right, <laughs> all right, three. It's uh, wait, hold on before oh, you hit play. Sorry, so sorry. this is a news report. Um, this is when they uh, the Satanic Church was going to be putting a statue. Weird up, Satanist church um, or a guy. And uh, <laughs> this was an interview on the news. I'll uh, I'll just let us play it. Let oh, Eddie this react. Comment section is gonna be lit right here. And then I'll uh, <laughs> then we'll hear what uh, this guy's a real say. life Ready? troll. Oh shit! Satanic? <laughs> or is this Idaho? You know this ain't Canada. No. Oh my God! This is in Detroit. Oh shit! controversial it's very co- yeah this was actually pretty funny it's a tr- it's they put up a statue because of freedom of speech of a giant uh baphomet with two children at its feet you'll hopefully see the what it looks like eight foot tall bronze baphomet damn is that new or old this is uh, this happened like last year. <laughs> uh, a lot of piercings in this uh, video, facial piercings, uh, old timey uh, outfits, ring of roses. This is kind of uh, you know like uh, grunge meets uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Is this like Game of Thrones? 
Maybe. This is... Come on, man. This is... <laughs> that is total ad lib. He, compl- he, he totally made that up. Uh, He's rehearsed that in his mirror like 7,000 times. Yeah. 7,000 times. 7,000 times. 7,000 times. <laughs> Tyrion, shut up. Let the girl talk. Look at that girl. They're like, oh, she can talk next. And she's just waiting in line. <laughs> I can't say anything because he's not done with his speech. Somebody buy this guy a new hat. <laughs> oh, this guy kills me. Uh, Why can't the girl talk? I don't know. Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) That's the only thing you can say after saying all that dumb shit. (laughs) Can't walk away without saying something crazy. Or crazier than what you just said. (laughs) What happened to the girl with the ring of roses? Nothing. All right, there it is. So. I'm disappointed. Uh, so yeah, that guy. He's basically <laughs> he's an uh, he's a comedian, and uh, so he does things like that. He trolls things, and so oh, that was actually a comedian. Yeah, he's a comedian, and so he basically tro- so that was all yeah, that was all he, scripts. He yeah, he tro- he trolled that, but uh, yeah, they put him on the news. So who's the girl? Is that his girlfriend? No, he just showed up at the event. <laughs> he just showed up at the event, and because he and the news did- showed up just for him. No, no, no. The news was there because of the story. They were there because of the oh, giant the statue. statue. And then he was so, a comedian. And then he was a comedian that showed up there and then pretended to be a Satanist. Okay. And then apparently because of the things that he said and how ridiculous they were, they didn't realize that he was a comedian. And so they put the stuff that he said on the news. <laughs> That's what we got to do, Ray. Free so, pub. There you go. So we got free we'll pub. We got a thousand for a followers shit. after that. <laughs> So anyway, that was uh, so he's done that before too, and so he just went overboard. So with that did one. they even know his name after that? Like, did that even pay off for him? Yeah, yeah, because I heard about him from that. He's got five million views on this video now. So nice. Um. So yeah, he's doing. Props. He's doing. He's doing all right. He's Alex Jonesing his shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. So that's uh, next that, video. That's cool. that. Uh. And then uh, the last one here. Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal's best fight scenes must yes. watch on YouTube. Steven Seagal's best fight scenes. Okay, Ray, so. you know how to tickle my funny bone. All right. Give so. me some fights. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Five five minutes of Steven Seagal fight scenes uh, that Eddie and Ray are going to commentate for you. So here we go. Steven Seagal's best fight scenes. He would have kicked Van Damme's ass is what this tells me. Oh, Would he have kicked George Foreman's ass, though? Hi-ya! Chinese Mushu. Oh, little Chinese, Chinese Mushu, China. Oh, he's in his prime right here. This is prime, Steven Seagal. Is this under siege? Oh, my God. He's got something that's going to clear up. The- oh! So fast, he didn't even see it coming. He just bitch slapped him. Look at that. Oh, oh. This is like rush hour. Nice. Do you understand the words that are coming out of his mouth? I did not, actually. <laughs> I don't think he said anything. He's so quiet. I know. This other guy has so many better karate skills. He just fucking hit. He just pushes him into the wall. Oh no! Oh, no. oh through the through table, the table spot. Table back spot. elbow. Oh, oh, with the chop, the choppity chop, chop, oh, chop. Oh my god! Knife, chop. Choppity chop, chop. Double the Chinese. Knife, oh, chop. he just knife. Crouching tiger oh, knife chop. He just cut that guy's <laughs> oh, dick. To the chest knife chop. He just, he just cut that guy's dick Steven straight Seagal up. Has all the kung fu action. <laughs> He's a walking GI Joe. Oh, he just cut that guy in a bandsaw. It's going to leave a mark. Oh, it's going to leave many marks. Oh, shit. Try to bring a knife out on Steven's go, motherfucker. Oh, see you later. With the with the machete to the hand. I think I just realized I need to watch more. Oh, you clubbed his own guy. By the way, my dad loves Steven Seagal, as you know. Oh, uh, yes. One of his favorite actors. Well, you know, he's putting the smack down. That bat didn't connect at all. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, he just beat someone with the butt end of a rifle. He is whooping ass here. He looks in better shape than this one. He's beating some ass up in a grocery store or something. See, he he actually shoots somebody. That's though. alcohol abuse right there. God damn it. Has he actually killed anybody yet? 
Uh, that guy with the band saw probably isn't doing all that good. Yeah, the saw and the knife. There's Take a, a knife to the chest, but he didn't stab him in the heart. Oh, um, no, yeah, he stabbed him above the heart. All right, so, oh, no, this has got to be under siege. Yeah. This is in a cafeteria in, like, a submarine. Or, like, a, uh, you know, behind the cafeteria. I mean, Steven Seagal just has kind of the worst. Oh, he's got the fucking cue ball? He's wrapping it up? Oh, my God. Why would... That's, oh. That's like a weird nunchuck. He is beating motherfuckers to death with a fucking cue ball. sock and a cue ball. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that guy's pissed. He lost his other teeth that he still had. Is that Andrew WK? That looks like Andrew WK. <laughs> the guy was hair. hiding with a fucking pool stick. Uh oh, Asian guy coming. These guys Asian are way guy. too coordinated for a fucking bar. This would never happen no. over a fucking bar. They'd be too drunk. Ooh, this is a pretty, this is a pretty badass battle right here. They haven't touched each other yet. It's just been all close-ups. Just cute, <laughs> yeah. This cue stick fight, cue stick battle. Oh shit! Oh shit! Should have done that the fucking first time. Oh, with the spinning wheel kick! Oh, with the knife! Oh, snap mare. arm bar! Snap mared him down! Oh, oh, and dick punch! Low punches! Guy got, got to take that dick punch! Punches and punches! Oh, that guy didn't want to do threw anything. Him in an elevator bathroom. Ooh, Tommy Lee Jones. With this? a bedazzled oh, coat. he's got the machete. He's getting his ass Machete, 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 machete. Oh, I don't think anybody has the impenetrable a... uh, vest. Oh. Right down the middle. Tommy Lee Jones does not stand a chance. I mean, what does it say about Tommy Lee Jones that he has, like, the same kung fu skills that fucking Steven Zagal does? Well, they're not showing his face, so. Ooh. This isn't terrible. I, I do feel like coming out of this, I'm kind of wanting to watch some Steven Seagal movies. Ah, shit. Nice. Ooh. He could have stabbed him there. Why did he not mm. stab him? Oh, the man in black's going to take it. Oh, we got Here him. comes the man in black. We've got a fucking Ooh. fight. In the, oh, a thumb to oh, the eye. That's illegal. That was not even a thumb to the eye. He literally... Oh, my God. He waited that long to thumb him in the eye. Dude, he literally just like <laughs> just rip, like gouged his eye out, stabbed him in the top of the skull. Yeah, that got gr uh, graphic there for a second. This is I can't believe this is on YouTube. This is like really good quality. Six minutes too. All right, well, Ooh. Seagal's definitely gonna lose because he has a gun. Oh, oh no, man, he's he, not. Just, he, he just, just threw him. He just threatened to couch. fuck his ex-wife. Oh. <laughs> he told him he was gonna fuck his ex-wife. And now this guy's an expert too. Oh shit! I'm oh, not gonna fuck your current wife. I'm gonna fuck your ex-wife. <laughs> Oh, he's still alive. Oh, no. It's a different ball guy. Oh, no, it's the same guy. No, it's the same guy, dude. Come on. Where's the wife at? Back's wife? I don't know. Probably with her new husband. <laughs> She's like, why am I getting fucked? Because yeah. I used to be married to Steven Seagal. This is bullshit. Those kicks are coming fast, but... Yeah, my mind can't even comprehend what's happening. It's not connecting. Another oh, knife. Oh, shit. That's the dude from uh, Twin Peaks. Oh, the crazy guy? No, Big With Ed. Big Ed. That owns the uh, the uh, gas station. That was Big Ed. This guy has no kung fu skills. Oh, my God. Oh, it's Seagal's brother with a that mustache. Was, that was the ex-wife, I think. That's a Tom Selleck uh, want, uh, look at, reference there. Oh, that guy's dead. That guy's dead. Oh, that makes it official. Steven Seagal would kick Tom Selleck's ass. I think we knew that already. Oh, oh, oh he just oh. broke his arm over his other arm. Misjointed elbow there. Uh. Wait, hey, is he gonna, he's back. Wait, is he going to battle the guy from Wings? <laughs> or is this before he died? <laughs> oh, that was a cat. Oh, man. That, that's like the Kurt Angle uh, Shane O'Mac. Through the glass. Oh, he's fighting an Asian guy now. Oh, oh no. That was a little too easy, but uh, he's got a sword now, and he missed him. Oh, the pool oh. table. Why didn't he get a cue ball? He had the pool table. Oh, my God. He, he had did not kill his ex-wife. He had to insert the... Uh, oh, yeah. there it is. 
You should have used a cue ball. There it was. Damn. There it was. That was pretty good. Steven Seagal's best fight scenes. YouTube. Go check that on YouTube. Run it back. And uh, uh, you got our play. Or go to the video corner on yes. the website. Or the video corner. You can or check it out from there. Yes. They know what time it is, right? Yes, you know what so, time? Do you know what time it is? Uh, it's time to check on these cubbies. It's live. time to go home. <laughs> We're going home. And Spirobot. Uh, and Spirobot's up, and the Cubs haven't scored yet. Cubs haven't scored. Okay. So let me uh go to the Inspirobot. Go first. I'm here, so I'll go yes, first. Yes, please, and I will check in with you. It's a kitten. He's in Uh-oh. the he's in the grass. It says, "If you are the only one who cares about the universe." You are not truly experiencing the universe. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So if you think you're the only one who cares about the universe, then you're not really truly experiencing the universe. Yeah. Right? Because everybody you know, everybody cares about the universe in their own way, right? Everybody cares. You should care, unless you're like crazy motherfucker in Las Vegas doesn't yeah, care fuck about that guy. Anybody. Fuck that guy. But all right, what you got? What yeah, you got? uh, I got like a doc looking out to like the water and shit. And it says school is a concept made to frighten certain people. It frightened me. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Frightening every Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, the fat. Sorry. Sorry. That I got ahead. Was that the Cubs game, Ray? I God damn. Was. You were doing a podcast. Sorry. Why would you do that? Sorry. I'm going to edit that out, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Can't do it now. That's like find, finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So fun, fun. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's universal call out. Let's uh, yeah. Let's wrap ran- that up. Let's for- randomize it up. And so yeah, last week was Native Americans, and so. we had thirteen, which we thought was going to be unlucky, and I thought it was pretty lucky. So let's do thirteen again. So that's a um, good number. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do third. Uh, you know what? No, I like this list. Okay. We got pigeons, we got airports, we got water skiing, we got athletics, farmers markets, lions, goats, death, post office, spiritism, gypsies, pilots, and skull. I like flea markets. <laughs> that wasn't even one of the things uh, on the list. What was what was uh, something market? Farmers market. Farmers market. I'm sorry. Farmers market. Is the one I like. <laughs> I like two. I like two things in uh, in coming into October here. Uh, I like goats and I like uh, skull. Mm, the skull seems a little easy, doesn't it? Let's not forget typewriters. <laughs> what are we gonna find from farmers markets? I don't know, but it probably is funny as hell. What about gypsies? I thought about gypsies. That's like my second one. Well, that's my. Or do you want to go? Do you want to do rock paper scissors between farmers market and skull? Farmer's market could suck. That means we got to have a lot of stories. <laughs> uh, what are we doing for the next one? Because we're going to be off. Uh, and then we're coming back. So, so yeah. So, ne- next week, uh, there will be no... Should we even do a universal call-out? Yeah, we'll come back in two weeks with uh, the results. F- fair to the other universal call-out. <laughs> sure it is. They, they, those only had one week. This one's oh, getting two. Typewriters got two weeks. Oh, that's right. Yeah, typewriters needed two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> You want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do. Uh, well, what gypsy? You want to I, just do I like gypsies? gypsies. Yeah, let's I try like gypsies. Uh, gypsies up. Okay. All right. I'm not mad at gypsies. All right. So we got gypsies for the win. We got no episode next week, um, and we will be back. Don't the forget following uh, week. Yeah, don't forget to check us out on social media. Uh, we're trying to get interactive on that bitch. Yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> you know, emails as well. And hit us up. You know what? Hit us up. Check out our Patreon page. Um, check out our social media, check Having out our website. Time, There's as plenty, always. plenty of stuff to dig into. So definitely, you know, spend the next week to do that, to dig into the backlog. We're coming up on episode 30. We'll be back in uh, two weeks and we'll have episode 30. So 30, this was two nine. Next one will be yeah, three Oh 30 of these bad boys. So nice. Another 30 coming. Yes. So with all that said, we are Audi 5,000 later. And we'll y'all. see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye. Peace.